OK, Anthony Blinken is speaking now at Cairo Airport. Let's listen in. We came here with four key objectives. To make clear that the United States stands with Israel, to prevent the conflict from spreading to other places, to work on securing the release of hostages, including American citizens, and to address the humanitarian crisis that exists in Gaza. Um, we started, as you know, in, in Israel. And it was important to make it very clear that the United States has Israel's back. We will stand with it today, tomorrow, and every day. And we're doing that in word and also in deed. I spent time with Prime Minister Netanyahu to go through the needs that Israel may have to um, make sure it can effectively defend itself. Uh, and you've already seen a lot of that assistance moving forward. And that's a conversation that will continue. Um, Israel has the right, indeed it has the obligation, to defend itself against these attacks from Hamas and to try to do what it can to make sure that this never happens again. As I said in Tel Aviv, as President Biden has said, the way that Israel does this matters. Uh, needs to do it in a way that affirms uh, the shared values that we have for human life and human dignity, taking every possible precaution to avoid harming civilians. Um, after we uh, left Israel, we've gone now to, uh, I think I've lost track, but to six countries in the region. Jordan, uh, Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, now here in Egypt. And the purpose of um, seeing all of our partners was first and foremost to listen to them, to hear how they're seeing this crisis, and to look at what we can do together uh, to deal with many of the concerns that it's raised. What I've heard from virtually every partner was a determination, a shared view. That it looks like we have uh, lost the feed to Anthony Blinken there, who was speaking uh, before departing Cairo, where he has been on a whirlwind diplomacy tour right around uh, the region. We're going to go now to Patty Calhoun, who joins us live from Washington, D.C. Patty, we heard uh, Anthony Blinken reiterate once again, as we have over the last few days, uh, the United States uh, priorities here, trying to prevent the conflict from spreading the hostage release and the humanitarian crisis. Was there anything else that stood out for you in, uh, in what we heard from uh, the U.S. Secretary of State there? I think what stands out for me is in all of the conversations he's had with his counterparts in the region is they are putting, and you just heard from the Egyptian president, they are putting the focus on the fact of what's happening in Gaza now. The Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, he is talking about the attacks on Israel. and. Again, they're very careful with their language, but it's also very deliberate when they said, again, we expect Israel to follow the rules of law. Israel is not following the rules of law, especially with that blockade. Now, I know we're hearing reports that some water may be turned on, uh, but we've just heard, again, carefully worded from the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, saying that they expect uh, that they that they expect that water, shelter, food for Gaza should be respected by Israel and others. So I think what's notable is he's getting pushback, I think, when he's going to this region. And you just heard from the Egyptian president saying, but this is not, it's not equal. What happened to Israel, this is now collective punishment. And again, so the, the, the secret, the, the sly language, if you will, of they have to respect the rule of law is they're not respecting the rule of law. They have not changed any of that language since mm. uh, they just first started using it some days ago. So the question is, are they going to start saying more than they should respect the rule of law, but they aren't? That's what I'll be looking for. Yeah, we also heard Blinken there say Israel has the right to defend itself, but the way it does matters. They have to take every possible precaution uh, to try and protect civilians. Is that new in this, that uh, is really outlining that civilians have to come first here? Well, they've been saying that at the same time they keep, and the president reiterated this uh, just last night, saying that Hamas is using civilians as a human shield. Uh, so the, they are 
basically saying, look, they're trying to protect civilians. They told them to move to the south. Then and if, they're, if they do hit civilians in the north, it's likely the U.S. would come out and say, well, maybe they couldn't leave. Uh, but again, it's what the United Nations is saying is it's, it's impossible to move a million people in such a short a period of time, and especially when it comes to moving people in the hospitals uh, that you know are running out of electricity. So they're trying to walk a very fine line of showing unwavering support for Israel, but also trying to appease partners in the region, because truly for them, the biggest concern, and it is actually one shared by the Amer American public, is that this could lead to a wider war. There's one mm. poll, eight in 10 fear that this is going to lead to a wider conflict. Okay, thank you so much for that, Patty. Uh, that's Patty Calhoun for us in Washington, D.C. Mukhodat Bagat is a professor of national security affairs at the National Defence University. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Uh, for more on this issue, thank you very much uh, for joining us on Al Jazeera, sir. We heard uh, and we have heard over the last few days all about uh, the United States and their priorities. But what are Egypt's concerns or priorities here? As everybody knows, Egypt is a major regional power and uh, this instability, this war in Gaza is against uh, the interests of everybody, including Egypt. Egypt is very concerned about all uh, about stability in the Middle East and also on national level, Egypt is very interested and concerned about uh, about two million Palestinians where they will go. Uh, Egypt is not an option. For a very long time, Egypt, Jordan, all Arab countries have insisted that the Palestinians maintain their national identity. Egypt does not accept the Palestinians to move there. Jordan does not accept the Palestinians to move there. It is in the best interest of Arab countries, of the Palestinians, for the Palestinians to stay there. Mm. What is the fear if the Palestinians, if two million Palestinians were to move to, to Jordan and into Egypt? Uh, this is, uh, will, will end the Palestinian uh, uh, dream, the Palestinian mm. demand for two-state solution. The Palestinians belong to Palestine, to the West Bank, to Gaza, and they demand their uh, nation state, their uh, independent state. And if they move to Jordan and Egypt, this will be over. OK, just stay with us, sir. We're going to go back to Antony Blinken, who is speaking on the tarmac in Cairo. That has countries in the region normalising their relations, integrating working together uh, in common purpose and uh, upholding and bringing forth the, uh, the rights and aspirations of the Palestinian people. That's one vision. It's very clear. There's another vision that Hamas has uh, demonstrated in the most horrific way. And that's a vision of death, of destruction, of nihilism, of terrorism. That's a vision that does nothing to advance aspirations for, for Palestinians, that does nothing to help uh, create better futures for people in the region and does everything to bring total darkness to everyone that, it, that, it, that it's able to, uh, to affect. So I think the, the, two, the, the paths are clear, the visions are clear, and I have no doubt what path people, the overwhelming majority of people in the region will choose and will prefer if given the opportunity. So our responsibility, all of us who believe in that first path, and that's everyone I talk to. Our responsibility is to make it real, uh, to bring it to life, to make it a clear affirmative choice. And that's what we're determined to do. We have to get through this crisis first, uh, and we're, we're working to do that. Uh, but we also have to get back in a very clear, practical way to that vision, to making it real. If we do that, everyone in this region will be in a much better place, and so will they, the rest of the world. The Thank you. Israel Thanks, everyone. Well, that was U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken uh, speaking there at Cairo Airport. We're going to bring back in our guest, uh, Godat Bakdat, 
is, who is a professor of national security affairs at the National Defence University. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, I want to ask about uh, Blinken's tour of the Arab region. We've seen him uh, go to about half a dozen countries over the last four or five days. He is due to head back to Israel on Monday, though. What message do you think he's going to be taking back from all the Arab leaders that he has met? I believe the main message which everybody agrees on that there is no military solution. What happened was not surprise. And uh, if we do not agree on political solution, meaning uh, agreement which both the Palestinians, the Israelis and Arab countries will accept, uh, this conflict will come again. It will not stop there. And this why the, in the short term, we have to stop escalation. In the long term, there is no military solution. All parties have to agree on political solution. Political solution means state for Palestinians in peace with the state of Israel. Mm. We heard earlier today when uh, Blinken met uh, Egyptian President Sisi, uh, Sisi warned that this could spread wider than just Israel and Gaza. I mean, how worried is Cairo about this expanding further beyond just Gaza? There is great concern. There are military clashes between Hezbollah and Israel. Israel bombed different mm -hmm. sites in Syria. Iran announced that it will uh, take action if Israel does not stop bombing Gaza. So there is great concern that the war will not stop in Gaza and will expand, will include the entire Middle East yeah. and beyond. Well, Iran uh, earlier today warned that no one can guarantee control of the situation if Israel invades Gaza. Do you see that as a threat from Iran? Uh, I believe wars take life on their own. When the Iran-Iraq war started, nobody ever thought it will take eight years. So uh, it is. this is a lesson. When the United States invaded Afghanistan, we never thought we will be there for more than 20 years. So it is very important to understand that it is very hard to predict the course of any war. OK, thank you so much for joining us uh, and for your insight on all of this. That is Godot Bagat uh, for us. Thank you so much.